March 1953, North America was very much in the middle of the Cold War. And at that point in time, American air defenses were considered critically important in order to ensure the safety of North America. In March of that year, a cadre of bombers took off from the Azores Islands just off Spain and Portugal and headed towards North America, aimed for Bangor, Maine. Unfortunately, because they were in radio silence and they had most of the equipment turned off in order to maintain that silence, they lost their way and they were off course. In fact, so far off course that they ended up over Newfoundland. Unfortunately, one of the bombers didn't make it past right here, Burgoyne's Cove. The community of Burgoyne's Cove is approximately 35 kilometers from Clarenville along Route 232. Once you get in Burgoyne's Cove, you'll go down the main road and you'll see this left turning road with some signage on it. And you go on there, you go in about a one kilometer and you turn right and you go down a further five kilometers. It's all dirt road, so you need a larger vehicle or a vehicle that can navigate dirt so be aware of that once you get to where you need to go you will see this sign you start the trail next to the sign it goes in and goes along fairly level but don't let that fool you because you have to climb about 500 feet so make sure you got good footwear and that you're up to climbing um, say a 20 percent grade there are some seating areas along the way but not much work has been done on the trail lately, so those areas are getting a little bit shabby. It climbs up through this valley that we're looking at here now. And here we go, we're moving up now, moving up. And as you as it starts to get higher, you'll see a pond emerge there into the center of the frame. That pond is where you're aiming at. That pond sits about 800 feet above sea level. And the top of the mountain is about 900 feet above sea level. The plane impacted at 800 feet. So had the plane been flying 100, 150 feet higher, there would never have been an accident and there would not be a story to tell. 23 men lost their lives that night. And it's, uh, the site is uh, very much a, a, a scene of uh, mass destruction. Once you get up on the hill, you will see on the left of the pond, as we move in here now, uh, to the left of the pond, you will see the main wreckage to the left. And above the pond, you will see a uh, monument. What I'm doing is flying backwards here now up at the top and as you come up that trail you'll start to see pieces of wreckage and you can see as we fly over it now we have a wing component, some engine parts, parts of the fuselage. But the major part of the wreckage is located in this crevice. The tail section of the plane pretty much is the most recognizable part of the plane. And that's where you'll end up. 5113721 was the aircraft number and that those numbers were actually placed there by the Canadian Armed Forces who put the monument in place about 20 years ago. You've got to be mindful of walking around this wreckage. A lot of sharp aluminum there and so be mindful of that but as, as anyone who's interested in airplanes there's a lot of very identifiable parts there for example right here we have one of the propellers this plane was unique in that it had six propellers and four jet engines so they called it six turning and four burning it's quite a large airplane this debris field runs in through the woods and there's a trail that leads in through the woods and actually I'm going to bring you in here now you can see various parts and pieces of the plane. The turret there. Part of the wing structure. And here is a shock absorber from one of the front landing gears or one of the main landing gears. As you go even further 
there's some parts of the fuselage again. Part of the landing gear strut. Electrical control boxes. Then we have another fairly large debris field here of various fuselage parts. Another turret there. Seems like a section of the roofing structure. You can imagine the forces when that plane hit that would cause such massive destruction. Here's what I consider one of the most interesting pieces. This is a part of the front landing gear. And you can see the damage that was caused to its uh, components there. And you can just see the tire. Front tire is pretty much still intact. Keep in mind now this has been in the woods for about 70 years. Now, above the pond on the hill, there's a monument, and the monument was erected about 20 years ago. And um, it's one of the propeller blades of the airplane. And on that monument, you will find each of the names of the 23 crew members, including General Ellsworth, who was leading the expedition. And General Ellsworth, actually, Ellsworth Air Force Base in one of the Dakotas, is named after him. So you can see in reference here now where the everything is relative to everything else. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the various links I have below to find out more about this fascinating crash.